Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing Exchange. This is a game from Bicycle Games, which people most likely know from playing cards. Uh, this game will play three to six players in about 30 to 45 minutes. So let's see, we've got our rule book here. Is this supposed to be on the lighter side? So this is not a particularly long rule book. We've got up here. So these are the player boards. Each player is going to have one of these. And this simply tracks how many of these different resources that you own. So this little dials here will slide over to show, you know, you control 10 banks and five bonds and eight insurance. That's kind of your investment. So there'll be one of these for each player. There should be six. Looks like they got just a little divider in between them to keep them from uh, doing damage to each other. Okay, that's all six of those. We've got the main board here, which Folds out like so. It's nice and thick. It's um, it's it's obviously got a little bend to it because of it being folded, but not not particularly bad. And essentially, the way this is works is that the different resources from your ledger board are going to go up and down in value. If they go too high, they're actually going to go slide back to the lowest value. And if they go too low, they'll slide up to the highest value. We've got our little markers here. One, uh, the cardboard chit here is the round marker. You'll play through five rounds total. And then we've got one little triangular marker per resource. And those will just start somewhere here on the central board and then move up and down as their values adjust. Obviously the point is to have the most money at the end of the game. And you're gonna do that by buying these different things uh, low and then selling them high, as you would expect. We've got some cards here, a couple decks of cards. And we've got some little pockets to put cards in to uh, hide essentially what you're doing for the course of the round. And that's gonna be everything that is gonna come out of the box. So let's start with these. Uh, these are, at least I can tell by these top cards, are the different people you can play as. So at the start of the game, you're gonna deal out all of these cards. I believe they're called founder cards. You're going to deal out all of them. And then from whatever selection of cards each player ends up with, they're going to choose their particular founder that they're going to start as. And as you'll see, there are different benefits for each founder. Essentially, they start with different amounts of shares and they start with a different amount of cash. And that's essentially it. Just those four values change from card to card. Next, we've got uh, market cards. I mean, this plain white is a little disappointing. The card stock in general is is nice. It's um, it's not linen, but it's a little higher up uh, quality than regular. These cards, uh, one will come out each round, and these will affect either have no effect or they could potentially affect the influence of different commodities during the round. And some of them bump up particular commodities. So this one would make insurance go up by two, which could, you know, drastically affect your turn. Now there is a mechanic in the game that will allow you to look at the top card of this deck each round. Uh, I believe it costs you a certain amount of money to do so. Uh, then we've got some cards here. These 
Each player will get one of these cards. So each player will have one bond card, one bank card, and one insurance card. And these are the cards that you'll put into your, your phase uh, sleeve for each round. And you're basically saying which one of these three commodities you are reacting to for that round. So say for the first round, whether you want to buy or sell, you want to uh, affect banks, right? Maybe you want to buy banks because they're cheap or sell them because they're high or, you know, you think they're going to bust and go really low. So even though they're at $80, you still want to buy. So again, phase one is just going to be putting one of these cards into this sleeve and then putting it face down. So people don't know what you're doing, but you have to basically commit to it at the start of the round. And then phase two is when you'll use these cards, which conveniently say phase two on the back of them. And this will be essentially what you're doing with that commodity. So I am affecting banks on this round. Do I want to buy banks or do I want to sell banks? I have my little sleeve here and depending on which way I put this card in, I'm either going to be buying or I'm going to be selling. And again, this is just, this will be private information. Nobody will see this because you'll put it face down, but this is to basically, so you commit to something at the start of the round. And then they also have a value on them. And obviously that's how much you're either selling or buying. So we got quite a few cards there. And again, I believe each player gets a set of these. So there's no sort of, um, advantage, you know, if you get all the high cards or all the low cards. So each player will have, I believe, one set of these cards so they can buy or sell up to nine um, during the course of a round. And then the last thing you'll be doing in phase three is you'll be choosing one commodity to influence. So just like in round one, you're going to get one of each of these cards and you're going to decide which one you're going to put in and you can either increase that commodity by one or you can decrease it by one. And just like the other two rounds, this is hidden information. So maybe because I'm buying banks this round, maybe I want the banks to go down so that I get them for cheaper, right? So at the start of the round, you're going to decide what you're doing in each, each phase. And then you'll be playing those face down in front of you. And then you'll essentially go backwards. Uh, so everybody will play their three phase, phase cards face down. Then you'll reveal and resolve one of these market cards. So in this case, you know, banks go up too. Then each player will reveal their phase three card. So for instance, my phase three card would make banks go down by one. And then each player reveals their phase one and phase two card essentially together. So I am buying one bank as my action because that's the card I decided to, to use. Even though the value is now at 70, which isn't good for me, I've already committed to that. And that's it. That's everything you're going to do for a round. And then again, you're going to play five rounds and then eventually go into the sixth round. I'm sorry, the market close, which is essentially just determining who has the most money. And then that person will be the winner. The last thing we have to look at here is just the money cards themselves. It's nice that they actually went with cards instead of paper money. Uh, I don't know if you have the dislike of paper money that I have, but it, it would have been tempting for them to go with paper money, but these are, are much preferable as far as I'm concerned. And again, it's pretty straightforward. Tens, sorry, um, tens, fifties and one hundreds. And that's it. That's everything you're going to get and a copy of exchange from bicycle games.